in this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Proverbs chapter 21, verse 27 through 30, where I'll ask the question, how do the wicked stand out? Proverbs 21, 27 through 30 says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with evil intent? A false witness will perish, but the word of a man who hears will endure. A wicked man puts on a bold face, but the upright gives thought to his ways. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. Solomon gives us a little bit of an indication of what we should look out for if we want to identify those who are wicked. And he does so right here, sharing these couple of Proverbs. And I'll add it to one at the end, verse 30, because I really like it. Nothing can overcome the power of the Lord. And that's important for us to know when we're considering the wicked, because so often in this life, what do we see? We see the wicked prosper. We see the good, the righteous suffer. But we need to know that ultimately the Lord brings about justice in the world, and it will all be done according to his standard. But in the meantime, we need to be on the lookout for the wicked, so that way we can minimize their impact on our lives. So here are three thoughts from Proverbs 21, verses 27 through 30, answering the question, how do the wicked stand out? Thought number one, false worship. The wicked stand out because their worship is false. And Solomon says that the wicked man's sacrifice is an abomination to the Lord, meaning that if a person is wicked, if they are not seeking the good things of God, if they are desirous to do things against his will and against his purposes, then the sacrifices that they offer to God are an abomination. So if you have a person who is adamantly against the Lord, but they're showing up to church every Sunday and they're saying all the right things while they're there, but the rest of the time they are as worldly and as hedonistic as you can imagine. Well, guess what? That person's works that they think are justifying them in some sense, they are really an abomination. They're going to cause additional curses. So you can identify when people's worship is false, when their worship isn't heartfelt by the way they live their lives the rest of the week. You can figure all of this out and you know that if somebody is being ever so pious on Sunday morning, but they're being ever so wretched on Saturday night, that that's a person you need to steer clear of. They're probably wicked. Thought number two, false witness. False witness is the person who lies for money. The false witness is somebody who is willing to sacrifice their integrity for some sort of temporal gain on the lookout for the false witness. You've got to be on the lookout for the people who are not concerned with the truth, the people who are willing to lie to get the things that they want. You need to watch out for them. They will stand out. You can find them. You can see them because they are quick to spread falsehood in order to gain whatever it is that they happen to want in the moment. So the wicked stand out. They stand out because they worship falsely. They stand out because they are false witnesses. They say things that are not true or that disparage the truth. And you can see that the false witness is someone that you had better steer clear. Thought number three, false confidence. The person who is wicked, the unrighteous person, the fool, will have false confidence. They'll have this belief that they're able to handle everything and they puff out their chest and they act really tough. They have this sort of braggadocious way of going about their lives. They have this false confidence, but the righteous man, what do they do? They carefully consider the things that they're saying and the things that they're doing. They're not displaying this false confidence that happens with the wicked person. The wicked person has such an inflated view of themselves that they can't ever admit that they've ever done anything wrong. They can't ever admit that they are at fault. They can't ever admit any of their failings. But the righteous person is able to admit, yeah, I didn't do that well. Yeah, I should have done that in a different manner. I need to be willing to admit when I fail. The wicked person, they have this false confidence. They have this manner of going about their lives that's seems ever so confident, but in reality, it's just compensating 
for the things that they don't really know. If we would be righteous, we would be willing to be wrong, and we'd be willing to admit when we're wrong. The folks who are unwilling to do that, those are folks that you need to look out for. Solomon sort of lets us know that there's all these different types of folks who are wicked, and their wicked behavior makes them stand out. You can see them, you can identify them, and then you can start to apply some of these other proverbs about avoiding the wicked man to your life. You can find out who is safe to allow it to influence you and who should be dismissed. And in doing so, you're able to control the amount of influence that these other people will have on you. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Proverbs chapters 20 and 21. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group, Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.